Senator Martha McSally revealed Wednesday she is a survivor of sexual assault in the military. She told her story during a Senate hearing on the topic. McSally said she was raped while serving in the Air Force. She said her attackers included a higher-ranking officer. CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes has more. I was ashamed and confused. I thought I was strong, but felt powerless. Arizona Republican Martha McSally stunned her Senate colleagues, describing how she was sexually assaulted more than once during her 26-year career in the U.S. Air Force. The perpetrators abused their position of power in profound ways. And in one case, I was preyed upon and then raped by a superior officer. I stayed silent McSally was the first female fighter pilot to fly in combat. Now I'm deployed to D.C. to fight for Arizona. After four years in the House, she was appointed to the Senate in December to fill the seat formerly held by the late John McCain. I was horrified at how my attempt to share generally my experiences were handled. I almost separated from the Air Force at 18 years over my despair. Like many victims, I felt the system was raping me all over again. She is part of a we'll growing sorority. Lawmakers survivors. who have come and forward to say, me staff. too. The chief of staff held my face, kissed me, and stuck his tongue in my mouth. McSally said she's going public now in the hopes it will lead to reform. I share the disgust of the failures of the military system and many commanders who failed in their responsibilities. Nancy Cordes joins me now from Capitol Hill. Hi, Nancy. What is McSally's proposal for reform on this issue? Well, Tanya, there have been various proposals put forward over the past couple of years in the Senate, and there are really two schools of thought. One school of thought being championed by uh, Kirsten Gillibrand of New York is that uh, you basically have to take the reporting of sexual assault to some degree outside of the military chain of command. She argues that um, victims are often reluctant to come forward to tell their direct commander what has happened to them, and that these commanders have incentives to downplay the incident because they're often worried uh, mistakenly that it is somehow going to affect the cohesion of the unit. So she has argued that you need to bring in um, experts from the outside and, and kind of create a, a parallel track uh, where victims can feel more comfortable reporting sexual assault. Uh, Martha McSally and some others have argued, no, you have to keep it within the military's chain of command and that the very commanders who um, might want to get this off their plate need to understand sexual assault better and need to be part of the process because that is the only way that you're going to fix the culture is if uh, the people who are in charge of the culture have buy-in, understand what's going on, and take more responsibility. So uh, that's part of the reason that the Senate hasn't uh, gone ahead and voted on uh, one proposal or the other because there are these two different schools of thought, but even the uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, after hearing what McSally had to say, uh, agreed that something does have to be done. And so, Nancy, what was the overall reaction to McSally's statement, and has the Air Force responded? Yes, the Air Force actually put out a statement after that hearing where she testified saying that it is appalled and deeply sorry for the criminal acts that she endured. So absolutely no dispute uh, that she went through something quite horrific more than once during her time in the U.S. Air Force. Um, as for her colleagues, you know, I think that, uh, that they were very sobered and, and surprised to hear uh, that even someone uh, as tough as Martha McSally, someone who uh, really is part of Air Force history as the first female fighter pilot to fly in combat. Even she was repeatedly victimized, something she herself said uh, she was afraid to talk about at first inside the military because she was worried about the response she would get. And she said that those fears were borne out when she did speak up uh, because uh, at one point she was so disillusioned she thought she was actually going to leave before retirement um, because she just couldn't, couldn't take, uh, you know, keeping the secret 
to herself any longer. And when she did speak up, she said that the response she got uh, made her feel like she was victimized all over again. So I think it, it was impossible for uh, any of her colleagues who were sitting there to hear her talk about this uh, and, and not be moved by what she had to say. Sure. And how great is it that she's now in a position of power that she can speak out about this and also do something about it or get something done. So, Nancy, I'm curious how prevalent the issue of sexual abuse is in the military now. I saw one report that said, you know, in some instances, it's actually gone up. Right. Um, and it's hard to say whether uh, reporting has increased because it's become more acceptable to go ahead and report when uh, you have been a victim or uh, whether the actual incidences of sexual assault are increasing. But they, uh, the reporting did increase in just one year, 2016 to 2017, those are the most recent numbers we have, by 10 percent. So that is troubling. And there's another study out recently, um, Tanya, that shows that a particular in the military academies that incidents of sexual assault are even higher and obviously uh, that's quite disturbing because these are the future leaders of the military who are being trained right now. Absolutely. Nancy Cortez, thank you so much for your reporting on this really important topic. Thank you. You're welcome. CBS This Morning co-host Nora O'Donnell spoke with Senator McSally one-on-one -on -one Wednesday. The former fighter pilot said she thinks sexual assault in the military is a national security threat. You can see Nora's interview with the senator Thursday on CBS This Morning.